Welcome to this session on absolute value functions for Algebra 2. And what we're going to talk about today, um, drawing graphs of absolute value functions, determining the domain and range, and or determining the coordinates of the vertex, and determining equations of absolute value functions given the graph or information about the graph. So there's lots of important information that you should have gleaned from the lesson. Um, you can substitute any real number into an absolute value function. Thus, the domain is always all real numbers. So domain of a function are the values for x that you can put into the equation. And for an absolute value function, the domain is always real numbers. The range of an absolute value function depends on the location of its vertex and the sign of its coefficient. Some more things, the graphs of all absolute value functions have a V-shape. And the graph of every absolute value function has a vertex. It also has a um, line of symmetry. So let's take a look at a graph and actually locate the vertex and the line of symmetry. So on this graph, this is the basic graph or the parent function, as your lesson calls it. So this is function f of x equal to the absolute value of x. It's the basic graph for absolute value functions. And the vertex point is right here at 0, 0. And then the line of symmetry would be, for this graph, the y-axis. So the line of symmetry creates that line where you can fold the graph, one side of the graph over on top of the other, and they line up. Moving on, the general form is f of x equal to a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. This is the general form for an absolute value function. h and k both represent the vertex. The h value indicates a translation in the horizontal direction. So all of the points, including the vertex, are being moved horizontally, either right or left on your graph if you have a number being added or subtracted inside the absolute value sign. If you have a number being added or subtracted outside of the absolute value sign, that means a translation in the vertical direction, either up or down. The A value is a scaling factor, and it narrows or widens the graph. And as you saw in your lesson, an A value greater than zero will narrow the graph. And then an A value less than zero will widen the graph. OK, from here, we're going to actually identify the vertex of these functions. So looking at the first one, we have y equal to 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 4. Notice in the formula that it's minus h plus k. So when you're actually writing the vertex from the formula, this is minus 3. Um, and usually we associate a minus sign making the name number negative. Um, however, when we're writing the vertex, because the minus sign is part of the formula, our vertex is actually going to be, the h value will be a positive 3. So it's really you want to be thinking opposite sign. So, but only for the h value. So my vertex for the h value will be a positive 3 and a positive 4. And then for this one, I have a positive 5 here. But remember, it is a minus in the formula. So it will be opposite sign for the h value, a negative 5. And then the k value will be a negative 6. And that's my vertex. All right, next we have write the equation of the graph. And we want to write the equation of this graph. So we will have, first thing we want to do is identify the vertex point. The vertex is right here. And that is at 2, 0. So we're going to use that to write the equation of the graph. We want to look at the general form. So 
the general form is y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. Well, we don't we don't have any information to give us the a value, so whenever you're not sure of the a value, you can make it one. So I'm just going to have a one there for the a value. And technically I don't need to write it, but I'm going to write it for while I'm writing the graph the first time here. So it'll be x minus h, so it'll be x minus 2 plus k, which is 0. So my final equation then would be the absolute value of x minus 2, and that's my equation for my graph, or my function. Moving on to the next one, we're going to graph f of x equal to the absolute value of x minus 4 plus 4. And then we're going to identify the domain and the range. So if you remember what the parent graph looks like or the function f of x equal to the absolute value of x, it's a v with the vertex of 0. Well, this graph has a vertex at hk, so it'll be positive 4 the opposite of negative 4 here, and then the k value is 4. So the, from the parent graph, we draw the parent graph on here. Parent graph looks like this. Not going to be exactly perfect, but we'll get it as close as we can. This is the parent graph. So what's happening is the vertex is moving um, from its spot at 0, 0 to its new spot going to the right 4 and up 4. So our new graph is translated 4 to the right and up 4. So the new vertex point will be right here. And we can draw our graph. Now you may want to get some points to graph this one or two points um, so you know how wide it is. Um, but we're just doing an approximation. But you can make an XY table if you'd like. Really all you need is one point because remember these graphs are symmetrical. So if I get one point, let's make X equal to zero. So it would be, be the absolute value of zero minus four plus four. And the absolute value of zero minus four is negative 4, and the absolute value of negative 4 is a positive 4, so I'll have 4 plus 4, which gives me 8. So my point then is 0, 8, one of the points on the graph. So I can put this one on the graph, 0, 8 will be right here, and remember it's symmetrical, so I'm going to have another point there. And I'll draw my graph. And it looks like this. So remember, the red, the graph that I have here in red is just the parent graph. Um, this is the actual graph in blue for my equation. All right, let's look at another one. Um, negative 2 times the absolute value of x plus 2 plus 3. So some things to note here. And actually, we forgot to do the domain and range, so I will go back and talk about that. Um, some things to note here. We want to write down the vertex. The vertex is going to be at negative 2, positive 3. Remember, opposite sign for the h value. Um, what you want to also notice is that this has a negative a value. So that means instead of a v, it's going to be an upside down v when I draw it. So if we draw the parent graph one more time, we'll draw the parent graph here in red. Oops, in blue, sorry about that. Let me choose it to red here. Our parent graph is going to be in red once I fix it. Okay, so our parent graph is in red. And what's happening with this one is that it is being our vertex now is becoming, becomes negative 2, 3. So 
It is translated to the left two. The vertex point of zero, zero is translated to the left two and up three. So our new vertex point for our graph is at negative two, positive three. And I would suggest getting a point um, just to be sure about how the graph is going to look. But we know that it's going to open down. So if we make a little xy table here, when x is 0, we have negative 2 times the absolute value of 0 plus 2 plus 3. And negative 2 times the absolute value of 0 plus 2 plus 3 will be negative 2 times the absolute value of 2, which is just a 2, plus 3. And negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 plus 3 gives me a negative 1. So I get 0, negative 1 as a point for my graph. So that will be right here. And this is symmetrical again. So I'm going to have another point at that spot. And I can draw my graph. And if you notice, this graph is narrower compared to our parent graph. And that's because it has an A value that is greater than 0. All right, and then last but not least, you're going to be given um, a multiple choice question on the exam that I thought might be a little confusing. Um, so I did something similar. You're given a graph and you're given these equations to solve. One thing that will help you eliminate choices right away is to notice that this is opening upside down. So that immediately, immediately eliminates C and D as possibilities because the A values here are not negative as they are for A and B. So I know those answers can't be correct. So what I can do is look first to see what this vertex point is. It is at 3, negative 2. So my vertex point is 3, negative 2. So I can look at the two choices that I have left. And they both actually have that vertex point. This one is 3, negative 2, and this one is as well. So how do I know if it's the, if it's the one with the negative 2 or with the, just the negative 1? Well, just take a point from the graph or take each of these graphs and pick a point that you know is on this line and substitute it in for x and see if you get the same point. So if I take 0 and put it in for x, because I know I can see this point on here is 0, negative 8. So if I put 0 in for x in the first equation, I get 0 minus 3, which is the absolute value of negative 3, minus 2. And the absolute value of negative 3 is a positive 3. So I get negative 2 times 3, which is 6, minus 2 gives me negative 8. So the positive 3 times the negative 2 gives me negative 6, minus 2 gives me negative 8. And then as I try this one, negative absolute value of 0 minus 3 minus 2 will give me the absolute value of 0 minus 3 is the absolute value of negative 3. The absolute value of negative 3 is a positive, but because of this negative sign here, I'm going to have negative 3 minus 2, which is a negative 5. So the one that has the point I'm looking for is this top graph. So my answer here is going to be A. So basically, just take a point from off the graph substitute it into the equations and see which one gives you the correct y value that you're looking for. And that ends the session on absolute value equations.